Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. I'm Pastor George Pearsons and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. We are so glad that you're here with us today. I just want to say thank you, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, for allowing me to be able to do these broadcasts. What an honor it is. I also want to remind you that all of the notes are available. All you have to do is go to kcm.org. You can download them, print them out, give them to your friends, and follow along on the broadcast with us because we have all the scriptures and information that you need. I also want to let you know that we have a free book Terry Mize has for you called God's Opinion of You. So again, you can contact KCM through the website. You can order this book. It's absolutely free. And I want to remind you today that you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and yes. the word of His testimony. Yes. I am so thrilled to once again introduce to you our guest, Terry Mize. Terry, Hello, sir. I just cannot tell you how wonderful this has been and how what a time that we've had together. Yes, we have. I've but it, thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it doesn't compare to what we are about to experience. Praise God. Because your wife is here. That's true. Renee, yes. welcome to the Believer's Voice to Victory broadcast. Thank you so much. What <laughs> we, a joy to be here. We are so glad that you're here. Thank and, you uh, very much. You know, we have a plan for this broadcast today. And I'm, I'm sitting here looking at a miracle. I'm sitting Praise here looking God. at the very goodness of God and Amen. the mercy of God. Amen. And I want you to tell your testimony about, of course, you both had spouses that went to heaven yes. and now right. the Lord brought you together. Yes. I know that this is going to be a ministry to those that are watching us today. Praise God. No that doubt. may be in the same kind of position where a sure. spouse has left right. and gone on without them right. and they're here. Right. So I want you to help them today and I want you to encourage them and bring hope into their hearts. Tell us about this this sign and wonder from God. <laughs> <laughs> sure, George. You know, uh, uh, I was married to Jackie for 44 years, and Jackie was the love of my life and the light of my life. Renee right. was married to Dean Garner for 44 mm -hmm. years also, mm -hmm. and he was the love of her life right. and the light of her life. Right. And the four of us were best friends for 40 44 years. 44 years, both. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both. So we have 88 years worth of experience That's between the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> but Jackie and I were missionaries in Mexico back in 74, and Dean and Renee were on staff at Lakewood Church with John Osteen in 74. Right. And we came up to a convention, and the four of us met, and from that day became you, fast you guys clicked. friends right. yeah. based around yeah. the Word of Faith. Right. Based, based, yeah. based, just based, I told my hitchhiker story, and it just happened. That's right. The story we discussed last week where the hitchhiker shot at me and the bullets didn't hit me, and Brother Osteen asked me to come up and tell it. It only happened in October, and here we were at the Thanksgiving convention in November. And so Dean and Renee ran up to me after service and they said, they, just from the few phrases I use, like yes. the integrity of the Word of God, they knew mm -hmm. I'd been listening to Kenneth Copeland. So they came running up to me and said, we know who you've been listening That's to. Right. And, and I think we stayed up to three o'clock in the morning That's that right. night. With, they came over to with, our apartment. With our two little kids and their kids. two little kids just sleeping oh, on the floor or something. They had two little boys. We had two little boys. And they they came over to our apartment and we got something to eat and stayed up to three o'clock in the morning with kids laying around uh, just talking about the Word. And then Dean and I were just best friends for 40 years. He was my hunting buddy, my fishing buddy. Mm -hmm. They pastored in Corpus Christi, Texas for 38 years. And Jackie and I actually moved down there for a number of years just to be in their church and be right. with them. They always support us in missions. And then we've traveled together with vacations and both personal life and ministry life. Right. And so, uh, so we've said since we've been married, which is just a short time now, we've said uh, it's not strange for Renee and I to be in a church somewhere or in a foreign country somewhere. Right. It's just strange for <laughs> Dean, and, Dean and Jackie not to, to not be, be there. here, you know. That's right. That's but right. they ran off to heaven and uh, left us lemons, so we just made lemonade. And, you know, the Bible says help widows and orphans, so I just married it. <laughs> you I was you trying sure to did. Help, I was you were fulfilling to help scripture. That's, That's right. right. That's wow. Right. That's right. Well, let me ask you something about, about the, be, before you really discovered each other, I mean, what was the time frame between Dean leaving, Jackie leaving, and then you two connecting with each other? How much time was there in between? And what was going on? Well, we had known each other, you know, of course, the 40 years. And um, Dean went to heaven about a year and a half before Jackie did. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, I, I, Terry told me Jackie was going to come down and be at the funeral and everything, but they had another issue come up where we're not able to come. And, and he was out of the country when it happened, so he and several other of our close friends were not able to come to the funeral, but we yeah. still had lots of folks come, and God blessed it and everything. And then uh, about another year, let's see, I guess 
uh, in that fall, Jackie passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, the next and he, he, let me ask you fall. before before talking mm -hmm. about her, he when he he passed away, and it was just he went out for a walk. Yeah, and he just went out. For, I didn't even know he'd left the house. And I was on the phone with some of our church members in Corpus Christi. Yeah. And I got off the phone and I went looking for him in the house and he wasn't there. And, and he had gone out for a walk and joggers had found him. They had called an ambulance. They mm -hmm. got him to the hospital, called me and they said they had never been able to get a pulse. And he was at the hospital and I needed to come. Mm. And he had been fairly ill for a long time. But I just, uh, you know, we still, you still never think it's going to be today. Yeah. You know, you yeah. always think it's going to be uh, several years later or something like that. And I, it was just a shock. And that first six months was really, really difficult. Um, yeah. Because you just, the shock to a believer that someone has gone and they're not coming back mm. on this planet in your lifetime, you know, looks like that you're going to, just that shock of be, of loss is yeah. the, it's just hard to comprehend, and then the next year Jackie passed away in the fall, and Dean had passed away in the summer, and Jackie passed away in the fall, mm -hmm. and so there was a year and a half in there that I was just really trying to find myself and figure out what was coming yeah. next, and yeah. and Dr. Paul Osteen and his wife Jennifer took me to lunch one day to right around the Christmas holidays to tell me when I was ready to look for a mate to let them know. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were they were really working yeah, on your behalf, yeah. weren't and they? Dodie and Dodie had some opinions Dodie's about Dodie's a who, consummate matchmaker. You know, <laughs> and so there, there, there were there were different people, you know, but I, I just I, I was enjoying uh, you know the, the the stress level in a lot of ways because of of the everything that had happened in our marriage and stuff. Mm. I, I think I was recuperating as much emotionally and physically yeah. you know in that regard too. And then when I went to South Africa Africa with my friend, and I, we were at a, what they call a prophetic camp there that they've done for decades, mm -hmm. and this very well-known prophet of God called me up who did not know me or know anything about me and told me that God had some real surprises for me when I got home and that I needed to be prepared, that I was going to be moving. And he saw me packing up mm -hmm. everything in my house and going through boxes of memorabilia and he said, don't be afraid to throw it all away because uh, he said, it just, it, it's over, it's gone. And yeah. you know, for that to be yeah. said to a widow yes. is very difficult to hear because, and he said, I don't mean you're a pack rat. He said, I just know that everything is attached to a memory. And I said, yes, it is. And he was about to, he was closing out the prophetic word. And, and then he whirled around and said to me, and there's going to be quite a bit of travel for you and you're going to be moving. And he just told me all these different things about getting ready to move. And I just thought, well, I, I don't even know if I'm ready for that. Wow. Did you ever think you'd be married again? What, you know, the thought I, of it? I, it's, it's like you, that thought comes through your head, but yeah. it's so foreign to where you are right now and where you've come from and the, and the grieving <clears throat> process. And I want to say to everybody, um, if you've lost a spouse, the grieving process is very different for everybody. Sure. And, and everybody processes it differently because we're so distinctively unique. Mm. And that's the way God has made us um, that, that it, you need to give yourself some time to do that to some and, degree. And the good thing is that during that time, you stayed, you stayed in the Word. You didn't, you oh, yeah. didn't no, no. give up, you didn't quit, and you allowed the Comforter to continue right. to work well, I still had children and yeah. grandchildren, and yeah. then I was still pastoring the church in Corpus Christi. I would, even though I lived in Houston, I still had to go down and oversee the church every other week yeah. and drove down to be with them. And then I was teaching a lot at Lakewood still and writing a curriculum and very, very busy and doing, you know, being prayer partner and teaching in all the classes that I taught in. And... Um, um, for a period of time, I was still working my 40 hour a week job that I had taken to help with the medical expenses. So I still had a very full life mm. and I didn't feel like I needed, you know, a man to complete me. It wasn't like yeah. I, I need a man. I think Proverbs 31 even teaches women, you're, you're pretty much completed all <laughs> on your own. Yeah. And that, you know, the, the man is the one looking for the wife, not yeah. the wife, you know, trying yeah. to find somebody well, to make you have Jesus, one is a whole number. Right. Yeah. 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 And you were right. about your about your father's business. And nothing exactly changes right. in the Word. You know, nothing yeah. changes yeah, in the Word. Changes. didn't change anything you preach or believe. No. Right, you right. Know, it's and that's the that thing that's important to know. You had a glitch that you weren't exactly. expecting. You went through this, the, the shock of it, yet you, you stayed steady 
right. in, in the Word of God. Well, and I had gone through enough things, experienced. I don't, I don't ever want to say gone through as though that's some self-pity element. It's just the better way to say it is that our experiences in life mm -hmm. have taught you that the only way you could ever survive anything high or low, mm. the temptations, the tests, the trials, the mm -hmm. heartache, the successes, is from the Word of God. Yes. And it really doesn't change anything. And Terry's probably one of the most consistent people, if not the most, that I've ever had a bird's eye view of. And to know that, that no matter what you go through in life, you somehow pick up the pieces to consistently still walk by faith. Yeah, I absolutely. live by the faith yeah, yeah, yeah. of the absolutely. Son of God yes. who loved me. And I would say that, oh, George, I would say that with my eyes closed and tears running down my face. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me mm -hmm. and gave himself for me. And I would just meditate on the fact that I live by his faith because he loves me. Yes. Yes. And that helped me through mm -hmm. lots of dark moments. Now with you, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, Dean's gone and sure. then all of a sudden, and, and Dean was sudden, it was, I mean, he just took off for heaven. Right. He just, he right. exited his body. And yeah. And he, you know, I think away. he was ready to go. I think he was tired of fighting yeah. the battle yeah. of his health, yeah. you know, and I, I could rejoice in the fact, George, that I knew he wasn't hurting anymore. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And with Jackie, now this was this was interesting because she just had some shoulder. She had a shoulder replacement. Yeah. Just a few days before, wasn't anything wrong with her. She wasn't sick. Right. And uh, I was with her, the you know, in the hospital, and then back home again. And then on the weekend, I was going to leave and go minister up in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we had a lady in, a dear friend, was in to to, to keep Jackie and, and help her, and our daughter was there to help Jackie. And I was going to be gone over the weekend. And uh, was anything wrong with her at all? And I talked to her on Sunday night, Sunday evening, mm. and we talked and, and you know, said, love you, love you too. And I talked to her more. She said, yeah, I'm just going to take my meds. You know, they'd given her some pain meds yeah. for her yeah. shoulder. She said, I'm going to yeah. just take my meds and go to bed. And she just went to sleep here and woke up in heaven. That's right. Wow. I'm still mad at her about it. Yeah. <laughs> now, why didn't you tell me you were leaving for the walk? Yeah, you know? really. Right. I would but, have gone with you, which I offered to do earlier in the day. But it, it happened, mm -hmm. and then you went through that period of time. Sure, How long absolutely. was it from that point until absolutely. the two of you just we, really started connecting with each other? Well, again, you know, we've been <laughs> friends for 40 years, but we didn't, yeah. we didn't see each other. Now, sometime, now Dodie Osteen. Uh, yeah, okay. Dodie Osteen, Dodie Osteen and Aretha Hagen that says it all right there. were the consummate matchmakers. Right. And Aretha's gone to heaven now, but Dodie's still very busy. <laughs> and so Dodie was on the phone to me within a couple of months about Jackie going to heaven and saying, hey, you know what I think? I th in fact, I was here at the minister's conference with you guys. In January, Jackie left in October mm -hmm. uh, of 13, mm -hmm. and I was here at the conference in January of 14. Mm -hmm. And you remember the night Lisa Osteen came in April Osteen, yep. you know, Simon's now and Lisa Combs yep. now. But uh, they were there and, and Lisa said, Mama wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. So we all went back to the green room, you know, and, and uh, Dodie called me. So I walked into the makeup room and uh, she called me twice during the same night. She said, I've got an idea. And I said, I'll bet you do. What's your idea? And she said, you and Renee Garner should get together. And y'all should get married. Y'all been friends for 40 years. And what and, did you say? I said, well, Dodie, Jackie's only been gone a couple of months, and I think it's a little too soon. And she said, oh, has it just been two months? I said, yeah. And so she just, uh, but she'd just call me and encourage me. And we still hadn't seen each other or talked yeah. to each other. And uh, so we were, uh, um, I had gone down to Houston later in the spring to preach at a church. Right, right. And real good friends of ours and of theirs. Right. And so uh, she came over to the Sunday morning service and was there in the service that morning, which is normal. You right. know, I mean, we, yeah. and yeah. then the pastor said, uh, let's just all go to dinner together. And he took Renee to dinner. And so we had lunch. And then Renee went on her way and I went on my way. And then I don't know, a month or so later, I was ministering again. And, and so uh, uh, I had called her and said, let's go to dinner with, uh, with your daughter. And and son-in-law, and so the, sure. the four of us went to lunch. But we didn't consider it a date. I mean, we right. didn't consider it anything more than friends. Right. We weren't even thinking the well, other I, direction. Yeah, and, and yeah. I, yeah. he and Jackie were my youngest child's godparents. Yeah, we're her youngest, yeah, yeah. And, and, so let's uh, get Abby and let's go to, you know, Yeah, lunch. grab Abby and, and her husband, John, right. let's go to dinner. Right. And, uh, and then I was, I was there uh, another time, and I said, hey, grab the kids and let's go to dinner. And she said, so she called, and the kids couldn't go to dinner, so the just two of us went. And we went to a really nice restaurant and had a great time, and neither one of us ever considered it a date or, <laughs> or had any 
<laughs> thoughts. It, it just we're just forty year friends. Yeah. You know, and Dean's yeah. gone, Jackie's gone. And so from that point on, this thing began to escalate, and all of a sudden, it's like your eyes were opened. Yeah, but again, it whose was, eyes, yeah. were, it whose eyes like, were open first? It wasn't like we were thinking dating or anything. Yeah. Right. You know? yeah. And right. then in March of the the, the following year, uh, I was preaching in Puerto Vallarta. Mexico, and then we have a dear friend that we've known for 40 years too, right, right. that her husband's gone and she has a condo in Puerto Vallarta. So mm. she had called Renee and said, go now spend time with me. And it just so happened, I mean, we didn't plan it and I didn't know Renee was gonna be there, Renee didn't know I was gonna be there, but it so happened we were there the same week. And so she and this well, other lady overlapped. come, yeah. come yeah. walking yeah. into church. I had two, my two granddaughters with me, spring break. And so they just came walking in church. I said, well, what are you girls doing here? So, you know, we had a couple of meals that week surrounded by church people. But again, we weren't thinking dating or anything. It was, it was the following summer. And my kids and I were down at a, at a, at a beach house in the coast of Texas. Yeah. And another pastor friend of ours, again, 40-year acquaintance, who pastors right down the road here at Wills Point, Texas, and used to be Brother Osteen's associate back in the day many years ago. Mm -hmm. He invited Renee. Again, we were going together, his family and my family. And so he had called Renee and said, why don't you come on down and, and visit with us? Because she's in Houston real close to where we were. I think they were matchmaking. I don't, I don't, I right. don't, it didn't <laughs> dawn on us at the time, but I think they were. And then just one night during that, during that week at the beach house, you know, yeah. I just said to her, hey, how about going to dinner with me tonight on a date? You know, she just kind of got quiet and all my kids were giggling and, you know, and grandkids and. And Julie laughs at her because she was cooking, didn't helping Julie, my daughter-in-law, cook dinner, and she was chopping potatoes. When I asked her if she wanted to go out to, on a date, she started chopping really fast. Really fast. <laughs> but she says we had an old folks' date because I took her to Red Lobster that night. Oh, okay. And, and we left there and went to CVS Pharmacy, you know. To get so. a prescription. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't anything much trendy about it. But you know, it we all, didn't you know? date. We, I sat yeah. there that night at Red Lobster, yeah. and I said, you know what? I said, dating so you can get to know each other and, and get know the baggage and know the kids and know the stuff. I said, we've known right. each other 40 years. I think we all just get married. So we just get married. And so, and, and you so were we, married. we decided that in August and got married in September. September. And, and Dodie and? Dodie married us yeah. along with Lisa and, and Dr. Paul, Joel's brother and Joel's sister. And so what I wanted to do in the remainder, I mean, this has gone so fast, but in the <laughs> remainder of this time, I, wanna, I want you to minister directly to the congregation watching. Because there's some people that need some help right. where this sure. is concerned. Right. They, sure. they, right. Somebody Absolutely. has left the earth and gone to heaven, right. Right. and they've been struggling with it. Mm -hmm. Would you please minister to them? Sure, and, and you can do that too. But I, I would just say this. I came to a realization with Jackie one day. Uh, I just thought, it just hit me, she's not coming back. Mm. You, know, I, you know, I was in this grieving process and all this kind of stuff. And one day it just hit me that she's not coming back. This is done. You know, I'll see her in heaven, but she's not coming back here. Right. And it was just like, okay, well, I have to put that away. Yeah. And I think some people yeah. out here have to yeah. come to the realization that no matter how much you love your Jackie and I had a wonderful marriage. Dean and Renee right. had a wonderful marriage. I mean, we loved them dearly and, uh, and they were the light of our lives, but they're gone and uh, they're not coming back. And so if that's your situation, your, your loved one has gone on to heaven and you just have to come to the point and say, well, you know what, they're, they left and we know where they are. They're not lost, but we know where they are, but right. neither are they coming back here. We're gonna go there, but they're not coming back here. And so you still have a life to live. Right. And, and we're not saying you have to get married. I know a lot of friends that just say, hey, I'll never get married again, or, or depending on the age, how much older they are, whatever. Uh, I love marriage. I think marriage is so great. Jackie That's used right. to tell me, she said, you know, if, if one of us goes before the other, I think we should remarry. And, and I said, well, I love marriage. Jackie said, you love marriage so much and don't want to be alone so much. She said, if I went first, you'd be married in 20 minutes. <laughs> you, you know, okay. and she didn't mean that badly. She meant, yeah, it, she sure. meant it good. Sure. You know, because right. I, I think yeah. to me, it's a testament that you like marriage if you want right. to do it again. I think but. the whole point here is the fact that God fills whatever void in our lives right. sure. is there. Right. Sure. And, and I, you know, I knew all her kids. She knew all our right. kids. We raised right. kids together. I taught her boys to hunt and fish. And, and so would you, well, go ahead and, and say I something. Did, I then. just felt like it was, it was such a miraculous, unusual dynamic that yeah. we found ourselves in. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people a lot of times think that you're, you know, it's amazing how many opinions you hear. You know, Terry had uh, people giving him opinions. I mm -hmm. had family and friends mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. giving, you know, well, you ought to do this and you ought to have this kind of man and, and all these kind of things. And by the way, I did marry the man, type of man Dr. Paul thought I should marry. Okay, good, good. <laughs> and so... Um, I had pastors trying to marry me off to people in their church. Every, every church oh, I preached in, 
one guy lined up ladies and he said, Terry, he said, these women are in their 40s and I'm, I'm 65. And, and, and he said, they're in their 40s, they're gorgeous, they're wealthy, and they're healthy. And I said, you know, I don't want a woman, this is just me, I said, I don't want this a woman that doesn't like know who John Wayne is, John doesn't Wayne. know who Ronald Reagan is, and okay. doesn't know what Vietnam was. Okay. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to raise somebody. I want somebody my own age. But, uh, you know, it was hilarious that all the ideas people have for you and, and to say, here, you know, we fixed you up. We've got you. The Lord takes care of everything. Right. Everything. And he knows who you are and yeah. he knows what you need. Yeah. And emotions and desires and, and persona are yeah. all yeah. different. I love the prayer Peter starts off with in, in Acts chapter one. He says, you who know all hearts. Oh, wow. That's great. And I mean, oh. that's a basic concept oh, that yes. God knows. Yes. He's omniscient. He knows, yeah, yeah. but then the fact that he knows the recesses of your heart even better yeah. than you know, yeah. and it, it may not wa all wash out and work out, you know, exactly like how you want it, but if you'll let the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. just keep living yeah. happy on the inside yeah. of you. It'll actually come out better. Yeah, it actually comes <laughs> out better. better. I mean, we have such a unique dynamic yeah. between the two of us. I mean, I highly recommend yeah. marrying somebody you've known for 40 years. Well, that would you help. Know, <laughs> because you skip a lot of steps. <laughs> we have one minute. I want you to talk directly to the camera okay. and pray for them I will. right now. Would you do that? Yes, I will. Thank you, Jesus. I just encourage you today to just let God be God as big as He can be on the inside of you. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Thank Father, Jesus. in the name Thank of Jesus, you, we just submit to yes. you the population yes, on the human Jesus race of now. those that would need a mate. And yes. you know exactly Thank where you, they Lord. are. You know Thank exactly you, where they need to be. Yes. Yes. And Father, I pray that they'll hear your voice yes. and none yes. other will they follow, yes. that you, they'll Jesus. not allow the opinions of other yes. people to mm. guide and direct them, but they'll put wisdom first. They'll be full of the Holy yes. Ghost and that you will answer their heart's cry for yes. them That's and right. that you yes. will lead them to the right place at the right time and yes. deliver them from the yes. wrong people in the wrong places. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, fill every vessel full of your glory. Not In Jesus' amen, name, but amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for that. We will be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Be sure to get the notes at kcm.org notes. And remember, Jesus is Lord.